Ahoy mates, it's Julie, and welcome to Friday's episode of The Voters TV. First up today, it's nautical news. Brunswick Corporation, which manufactures Mercury and Mariner outboard engines, Boston Whaler, Sea Ray, Hatteras, a multitude of other boat lines, and many other marine parts and accessories, announced last week that it would lower production of marine products in the second half of 2007 due to continued weakness in U.S. retail markets. The firm cited data indicating that retail sales are down by as much as 13% in key categories during the second quarter, usually the strongest part of the year for boat sales. The company is reducing its earnings estimate for 2007. This reflects the effect of lower sales and lower fixed cost absorption from the production cuts in the second half of the year, among other factors. The company broadcast its recent conference call with investors on its website, www.brunswick.com. And on a brighter note, let's turn to our smooth sailing segment, where today we find not just a government official helping a sailor, but a boater helping a boater. We brought this story to you back in episode 9 on July 6th. British yachtsman Adrian Flanagan was resuming his quest to become the first person to sail a single-handed, vertical circumnavigation of the globe. He was forced to halt his journey a little over nine months ago in Nome, Alaska, after having already covered some 26,000 miles aboard his 40-foot sloop, Barabbas, to wait out the winter. Well, what we didn't tell you in our previous coverage is that Flanagan was forced to abandon his journey not only by winter weather approaching, but also by the Russian government, who had not granted him permission to sail through the Russian Arctic on the last leg of his route. Flanagan recounts overcoming these trials and more on his website, www.alphaglobalx.com, and on his blog, agx.firetrench.com. Well, on July 18th, Flanagan finally made his way out of Nome, but only after being assisted in getting cleared by the Russian government with help from none other than Roman Abramovich. Abramovich is the governor of the Russian Far East region of Chukotka, where the Northern Sea Route begins. Abramovich is also the 16th richest man in the world, according to Forbes Billionaire List, and the owner of several of the world's 100 largest mega yachts, including Polaris, Ecstasia and the 370-foot Le Grand Bleu, which, according to Power & Motor Yachts' recently released 100 largest list, may have been given away by Abramovich recently to a friend as a gift. Pretty generous. Though that's unconfirmed, we do know that he gave Adrian Flanagan the gift of invaluable assistance in obtaining the necessary documents from Russian Transport Ministry's Northern Sea Route Administration so that he can proceed with this final leg of his expedition via the Russian Arctic. Thanks to Abramovich, Russia's government has not only granted Flanagan unprecedented special permission to make the attempt, but they'll also use their fleet of icebreakers to assist him. British and Russian, sailor and power yachtsman, the boating world comes together across national boundaries and differences in style. Beautiful, isn't it? Well, whether you're on a solo journey through the Arctic or just looking for some cool trivia, it's Did You Know Time, where we look at a little nautical nomenclature. Did you know that the word groggy has its origins in the world of mariners and trade ships? In 1740, British Admiral Vernon, whose nickname was Old Grogram for the cloak of Grogram he always wore, ordered that the sailor's daily ration of rum be diluted with water. The men called the mixture grog. Therefore, a sailor who drank too much grog was groggy, giving rise to its current use to describe everything from lack of sleep to dizziness. Another alcohol-related phrase, three sheets to the wind, comes from sailors' antics in colorful language. A sheet is a rope line, which controls the tension on the downwind side of a square sail. If, on a three-masted, fully-rigged ship, the sheets of the three lower course sails are loose, the sails will flap and flutter and are said to be in the wind. A ship in this condition would stagger and wander aimlessly downwind, much like a drunken sailor. Finally, if a crewman were standing watch on the weather side of the bow, he would be subject to the constant beating of the sea and ocean spray, often feeling less than 100% or under the weather. So, how does one go from under the weather to ship shape?
continuing on with a little etymology here, did you know that the word nausea comes from the Greek word for ship, nos, a frequent cause of those nasty symptoms? And yes, I'm talking about nausea from seasickness. Whether cruising or sailing, it never seems to fail that when a guest comes aboard who's new to boating, especially when cruising offshore, they fall prey to it. And if you've ever suffered from the queasy sensation of having your equilibrium confused by turbulent waves of movement, you know how absolutely miserable it can be. But when they do come running to you for assistance, there are many remedies you can offer. Seasickness medications, usually in pill form, are effective but cause drowsiness. Of course, that can get a pesky guest out of your hair. These medicines can also take the form of skin patches meant to be stuck behind the ear. Ginger is another common anti-nausea remedy, including ginger snap cookies, ginger root tea, and ginger ale. On larger yachts and ships, anyone prone to seasickness should also stay on the upper decks, especially outside looking at the distant horizon, rather than at closer objects. But the most effective remedy for me, and what I made available for all my guests when I served as a luxury yacht stewardess for three years, was travel wristbands. You can purchase them at most pharmacies and they only cost around $10. But these only work as prevention, so you or your guests need to be wearing them before a boat actually gets going. Once a person's sick, they won't cure a thing. Now, I will admit that recent evidence, including a segment on the popular TV show Mythbusters, suggests that these wristbands may only work primarily via a placebo effect. However, they worked for me in really rough seas, so I'm not complaining. And that's a wrap on this Friday's episode of the Boaters TV. Join us back here on Monday, and until then, a safe and happy boating weekend to you all. Take care. This episode of The Boaters TV was brought to you by the letter Q. That's Q for Quebec and meaning my vessel is healthy and I request free practique. Huh?